you can draw this in Procreate. You can create this stunning looking landscape on your iPad. During this easy step-by-step -step iPad drawing tutorial, I will guide you through the entire process of painting this piece. We will start off by creating some very simple shapes. I will show you how to work with textures and we will slowly build up all the details of this artwork. I promise you it's easier than it looks. By the end of this Procreate tutorial, you will have your own amazing results, which you should be really proud of. If you you want to share it and you're sharing it on Instagram then tag me in the image not just in the description because that way I will be able to find your work and that's great because then maybe we will see your result in the next video just like these fantastic results from my friends at patreon in case you don't already know it that's the place you can go to if you have a serious procreate tutorial addiction because I have more than 150 procreate tutorials there ranging from beginner levels to more advanced levels including this landscape tutorial which I'm sure you will like if you are enjoying the current tutorial so i'm looking forward to seeing you there for this tutorial we're using the app procreate of course and we're working on a canvas that is 3000 by 2000 pixels and i have linked the color palette in the description also during this tutorial we will be using free procreate brushes including brushes from my treasure chest if you don't already have it please go to freefromflow.com you can get a whole bunch of amazing procreate brushes and it's totally free and now if you're already let's get started working on our wonderful rocky island we'll start off by dropping in a color for our sky let's go to the color palette and use this first color in the first row and drag it onto our canvas then we are going to make a horizon line and we are going to do that on a new layer so we'll go to the layer menu the two little squares then we'll tap the plus and then we'll grab another color we'll grab this one over here that's the fourth color in the first row and for our brush let's use the monoline brush which you can find under calligraphy now the size doesn't really matter do make sure that the opacity is at 100 percent and i'll set the size to five percent and now we're going to make a horizontal line for our horizon then let's draw a horizontal line a little bit below the halfway point so i'm guessing about here draw a line hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick line and then hold one finger on the screen to make sure that your line is perfectly horizontal and then drag in the color like this to fill that area next we are going to apply some gradients to these two areas and let's start with our sky so let's go to layer one and then for our brush we will go to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush and for our color we will grab this one over here, the very light color, second color in the first row. Now the opacity of this brush is at 70%. And let's set the size to 15%. And then let's go over this lower area with these horizontal strokes and make that area a lot lighter. Then to make this more soft, you can go to the magic wand here, then select Gaussian blur, and then slide to the right on your screen with your pen or your finger to turn this into a nice soft gradient. I'll go for a 30%. Then let's go to our water layer over here, layer two. First, I'd like to make this edge a little bit less crisp. It should be a little bit blurry. It's far away in our scene. So let's do that by using the Gaussian blur again. So we'll go to the magic wand, then to Gaussian blur, and then slide to the right just slightly. Let's go for, I think 3% is nice. And then to apply our gradient on this layer, first we need to go to the layer, then we'll tap this layer and turn on alpha lock. Now we can only apply color to this area that is already on this layer. So we won't be able to paint over our sky, which is super helpful. Now first, let's grab a different color. Let's start with this one, the fifth color in the first row. And let's go over the lower area. Just make multiple horizontal strokes like this and then we'll switch to the darker color that's the sixth color in the first row and we'll go over the lowest area like this not too much and now let's blur this a little bit let's go to the magic wand then select gaussian blur 
and then slide to the right to about, well, let's say 25%. And I'll switch to a different color. We'll grab this one over here, third color in the first row. I want to add some more light near the horizon. Do make sure to turn off Gaussian blur and then go along the horizon. You can paint on top of it, like outside of this shape. You don't have to go over it. This will create a nice soft gradient. Just make horizontal strokes. Maybe a little bit more over here. I'm using very little pressure. Then we'll switch back to the dark color, sixth color in the first row. Let's just darken the lower area a little bit more, very gently. And then I also like to add a little dark edge near the horizon. I want to make the brush a little bit smaller to do that. Let's go for 8%. And let's paint above our horizon to make sure that it gets really very subtle. Just a little bit. Gently go toward the right. Until it looks like this. Now that we have the base for our sky and our water, it's time to lay down that base shape of our big rocky island. Let's create a new layer to do that. So let's go to the layer menu, then tap the plus. And then for the color, let's grab this one over here, third color in the second row. And for the brush, I'd like to go to the calligraphy brushes and use the script brush. The script brush also has hard edges, just like the model line brush. But with this brush, the harder you press, the thicker your line will become. The opacity of this brush is at 100%. We don't want a transparent rock. And the size is at 15%. And we'll start about here. That's like one third of the canvas. We'll go up a little bit. Make a bit of a wobbly shape. Then we'll make a bit of a rounded shape at the top. Don't worry about uh, the tidiness. Just looking for a nice rocky shape here and we can always adjust it later. Then we'll go a bit below the horizon. And then to the right here. So this is a nice start. Let's drag in the color to fill the shape. And then we can add some more. We can sculpt it a bit. Perhaps add a little bit here to the top. Make sure to color that in. So now you can decide how big you want your rocky island to be. For now, this looks good. You can also tap and hold the eraser to make it switch to the script brush and they can easily carve parts of this rock and perhaps get some more crisp pointy parts. Or if you want it to be a bit smaller, you can easily carve it this way. I also want to carve a little, a little hole in here about here. I want to create a shape like this. So we'll be able to see the horizon through there. Make sure to entirely erase it. It's almost like a little cave. And then another one over here. We'll make this rock look nice and interesting. So just carve it out. Make sure to erase everything inside. We don't want any floating rocks. And then we can switch back to the brush and you can make it more tidy. Maybe a little bit smaller here. And we can add some extra interesting stuff. Maybe like a stone hanging here, like a dripping rock over here as well.
I think this looks good. Now let's make a new layer on top of this for some more rocks. Let's tap the plus. Now then let's switch the color to the second color in the second row. And first let's make another little island over here. In front of our other rock. To about here. Drag in the color to fill it. And then over here I want a higher one. And it'll cover part of our rock. It'll go down here. And then it'll look something like this. Drag in the color. Make sure everything is filled. And now let's use the eraser to carve it a little bit. Make these parts a little bit more clean with nice crisp pointy parts and over here as well Maybe carve out a little bit more over here. I think this looks good. Let's make some more rocks on different layers. Let's go to the layer menu, tap the plus, and for instance, make another rock over here. You do need to grab the brush, not the eraser. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Let's make a shape over here. It'll be a little rock sticking out of the water. Drag in the color, grab the eraser if you want to create some crisp parts. Make it a bit more angular. Then we'll make another layer. Let's tap the plus and then for our color, let's grab this one over here for a more grayish rock. Third color in the third row. And I want some rocks here in the foreground. Maybe something shaped like this. You can make a pretty random shape here. Don't worry about it too much. Drag in the color. And again, you can use the eraser to make some areas a bit more angular. Carve parts out. Maybe make this a little bit more pointy. And of course you can switch back and forth between the eraser and your brush to sculpt this. Go back to the brush, add a little bit more over here, and let's add a small little rock here. Again, I'll grab the eraser to carve it a little bit. There. I just want a little island in the back over here. And let's place that on a layer underneath our other rock. Since it's farther away, it makes more sense to have it on a layer that is lower. You know what? We can actually put it on a layer underneath our water layer. So we won't be going over the water. It'll be really on the horizon. So let's tap the plus here. Then for our color, let's grab this one. Ninth color in the first row. It's very far away. It is influenced by the atmosphere. It'll look more bluish, not just because of the atmosphere, but also the water that is reflecting. So everything that's far away will look a bit more bluish. Let's make a very small island here. Like this. Later we can put on some trees perhaps here. Next it's time to start adding texture to our rocky island. So let's go to the layer with our rocky island, layer 3 over here. 
Then we'll tap a plus for a new layer. And then for the brush, I'd like to go to the organic brushes, then to the top and use the spires brush. Then for the color, I'd like to use this one over here, fourth color in the second row. The opacity of the brush is at 100%. And let's set the size to 60%. And then let's just go over our screen, create this texture like this. And then we'll go to the layer menu and tap the layer and then set it to clipping mask so it will only show up on our rock shape. Then we'll go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. Make sure to turn off snapping here and then have it set to free form. And then let's squish this together by dragging this handle and then just rotate it and move it around on your rock until you find something that looks interesting. For instance, something like this, this will be a nice base of texture. Then we can tap the arrow to get out of here. And then let's just, let's just pinch this together and then tap the layer and turn on alpha lock. Now we are going to build on top of this to add more texture and shape this rock more. The brush I would like to use for that is part of the treasure chest brush pack. So please go to freefromflow.com. If you don't already have it, it's totally free. And the brush we'll be using is the jittery tapered brush. Then the color I'd like to use is, well, let's first start with this one, second color in the second row. And we are going to add some lighter patches. Now the opacity of this brush is at 100% and let's set the size to 10%. And then let's add some lighter patches. For instance, here along this bump, I want to add some lighter parts. And it's okay, you can go over the texture that you have. Don't worry about that. It's just a nice beginning for us. Then some light streaks over here. Maybe a light part here. I want to focus the light parts on the left side of our rock. I have decided that that's where the light will be coming from. And you can follow that texture that you already have a little bit. You can use it a bit as a guide and let it inspire you. Or you can also go your own way and add some extra shapes. Over here, this will be a little ridge. So I'm following that line, making a bit of a horizontal part here with some of these light patches. Let's also add some light here at the top, hitting there. Perhaps over here, a little bit of a light area. And over here, I want it to be a lot darker. So let's go and grab a darker color. Let's just start with this one. Fourth color in the second row, which we also used for our texture. And let's darken this area. It's more in shadow. Let's add some creases here. along the side. I want to cover a lot of this texture here. But not everything. We can leave some parts that are visible. If you need more precision, then you can make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's say 5%. Get some thinner creases, some shadow here. Along these sides. So you can add a darker line along the edge of the 
of the light parts. And you can also switch to the third color and the second row, which was the base color of our rock, but you can go over some areas and get rid of some of that texture. And this way you can use textures and you can use textured brushes, but make it look more painterly and less generic. Let's also go for an even lighter color. First color in the second row for the lightest parts, like over here. Imagining some light is hitting there and over here. And here. So mainly on the left sides and over here on the right side, since it's in shadow and since this whole area is very blue, I want to add some blue touches to that shadow. And an easy way to do that is by using the color booster brush, which is also part of the free treasure chest brush pack. Let's grab a blue like this one, ninth color in the first row. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and the size is at 40. And let's just gently go over this right area to add a little touch of blue. And now once you have done that, you can continue working on the rock texture for as long as you like. You can also use the fine liner brush, by the way. It's also a great brush to add that rocky texture. We can grab that dark color again, that fifth color in the second row and then add some even darker creases. By the way, the opacity is at 100%. I have the size set to 10%. And you can have a bit more precision with this brush. And add a bit more of those details, those creases. along the edge of these light areas. Of course, you can switch back and forth between the colors. You can also hold your finger on the screen to grab a local color and to get rid of some dark parts. You can just switch back and forth to work on this texture. Maybe some of that lighter color. Add a bit more of that. And then once you have a nice looking rocky texture, then it's time to start working on the next rocks actually. And of course you can always go back to these rocks later if you want to adjust some things. But for now, let's leave these alone and let's move to the next rocks on this layer. Let's start off by adding some texture again. Let's tap the plus. Let's go back to the spires brush. We can actually also just go to some brushes here at the top, grab the spires brush again, and then for the color, let's grab this one. Let's grab the sixth color in the second row. Then let's drop in some texture again, like this. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oops, losing my texture. Let's just do that again. Drop in a texture, then go to the move and transform tool. Actually, we could have set it to uh, clipping mask first, but this is fine too. Let's rotate it and start with this rock over here. I just want some subtle texture there, something like this. 
Then let's go to the layer menu, tap this layer and set it to clipping mask. And then let's duplicate it by sliding to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the move and transform tool and move this around. Let's rotate it, make this a bit more vertical, something like this. Then we want to make sure that this texture doesn't end up on this rock and the texture of this rock doesn't end up on that rock. So let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, then set it to freehand and turn off color fill if you have it turned on. Then let's select this rock, close the selection, use invert so everything else is selected. Then go to the layer, tap it and use clear. Then we'll do the same on this layer. Go to the selection tool, select this rock, use invert, go to the layer, tap it and use clear. Now let's pinch these textures together and then let's lower the opacity a bit. Let's tap the end, slide to the left and let's set it to like 39%. Now let's pinch these together. Now let's add some extra cracks. First, let's turn on alpha lock here. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock. Then let's go back to the jittery taper brush. And for the color, let's actually stick with this warm brown. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's just create some cracks here. Something like this. Maybe we can make a bit of a triangular shape here. Create some shadow on this side. We can roughly fill it in by hand. That will also give a nice little texture. Some over here. And then once you have this dark area, let's go for some lighter patches. Let's grab this color, first color in the second row. And let's add some light parts. Go along the cracks, leave some of that the texture visible. Make sure you get some nice crisp edges. Now let's do something similar over here. Let's grab a different color. Let's grab this one first. Fourth color in the second row to create some shadow on this side. I'm gently going over using a little pressure. To just darken it up. Now let's also add some of these first cracks. Some random jagged shapes. Let's also grab that warmer color, that sixth color in the second row. Let's use some of that over here on the warmer side. And now let's switch to the lighter color. Let's grab this one, actually, the seventh color in the second row. And let's add some lighter patches. Maybe a little bit of light here. Now let's also switch to this one, first color in the second row for some 
even lighter patches. And then let's grab the color booster brush again. We have it over here. Let's grab the blue again, ninth color in the first row. And let's add some bluish tones here on the right side. Maybe a little bit over here as well. And then let's grab the fine liner brush and let's set it to the lightest color, first color in the second row. Now let's just add a little highlight here, perhaps a little bit here, just a few little details. I do feel like this rock looks a little bit unnatural with that upward facing, well that upward pointing part. So let's go, well let's go and grab the eraser actually and just Move this downward a little bit. I think that looks better. Next, let's add some green to our island. So let's create a new layer on top of these two. Let's tap the plus. Then for the brush, let's go back to the jittery taper brush. And for the color, we'll start off with this one over here. That's the eight color in the third row. And let's add some green on top of our rock by making rounded motions, creating a nice shape like this on top of our rock. You can definitely cover a part. Don't worry about that. So rounded motions. Perhaps some green here, some of the rocks here. Small wiggly rounded motions. And also some green over here on this edge. I'd also like to add a few little trees. We'll just make the crowns of the trees floating around here. And perhaps some bushes here. Also one over here. on top of this rock. Little tree over here. So it's a bit like a, a cloud shape almost. Just these rounded shapes. Now let's switch to a darker, more bluish color. This one over here, fifth color in the third row. I want to use that for a few of these bushes on this side that are more in the shadow area. Then to start adding some more color variety to this green, let's first turn on alpha lock on this layer. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock. Then let's switch to a lighter color. This one over here, ninth color in the third row. And then let's go over here. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger actually, 10%. And let's make some random rounded motions, but do leave some gaps in between. So some gaps between these wobbles. So to give that suggestion of trees here. All the way to the right. Let's make these random shapes. 
over here as well on these bushes and on the trees. Leave the underside a bit darker. And here we'll leave those alone. Those are in shadow. And over here. Then we'll switch to an even lighter color. The tenth color in the third row. And we'll go over again. This time make even lighter patches. And again still leave gaps making small little dabs little rounded motions to get the simple looking forest here and I'll add less of this lighter green on the right side since that's more of the shadow side of our of our little island so focus on the left side and on these little bushes and the little trees and over here then let's grab this color over here sixth color in the third row for a little bit of lighter bluish color here a little bit of variation you can actually also add some of that bluish color that fifth color in the third row on this area a little bit of more shadow perhaps a little bit on the underside here a little bit over here and then to add some some tree trunks let's go back to this layer over here then tap the plus and then let's grab this color over here fifth color in the second row and let's grab the fine liner brush again and let's go in here and create some of these trees and branches very simple let's make the brush a little bit smaller six percent some very simple shapes is all you need here I do feel like our entire island might be a little bit big but let's make it a little bit smaller by selecting all of these layers so the green and these rocks our tree trunks and this rock then let's go to the move and transform tool and let me just squish it a little bit make it a little bit lower maybe move the bottom part up a little bit I like this better let's tap the arrow to get out of here so this is about the size of our island right now when I look at these rocks I feel like these are merged together a little bit there is not a lot of distinction between the color here and the the contrast so let's go to this layer and make this area a little bit darker let's grab the jittery taper brush and for the color we can actually go for this one fourth color in the second row now let's add some darker parts here I'll gently go over here add some darker areas to make it stand out more we can grab this local color that lighter color and simplify some of the rocks a bit now you can see that there's a bigger difference in contrast between this little island and our bigger island 
so it looks less merged together. And that's exactly what I wanted. So let's continue and work on this rock now. Let's go and let's merge our little tree trunks with this layer actually to save some space. Then we'll go to this layer. Again, let's first add a little bit of texture. Let's tap the plus, set this layer to clipping mask. Now let's grab the spires brush again. And for the color, let's grab this one. Sixth color in the second row. And let's just go over here, add a gentle texture. Let's go to the move and transform tool. I want to rotate this a bit. I want the shadow part to be on the right side. So it should be more something like this. This works better with our shape. Then let's go to the layer menu, tap the end. Let's lower the opacity a bit. I do want to see it. So let's tap the end and slide it to, let's say 47%. Now let's pinch this together. Then let's grab this color first, third color and the second row. And then for our brush, let's go to the jittery tapered again. And let's darken. Oh, First, we do need to turn on alpha lock, otherwise we will be painting outside of our shape. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock, and then let's go over our rock, darken this area. First, just gently, you can gently build this up. Then let's go even darker, let's grab this color fourth color in the second row. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller, 6%. And let's add some darker creases. And over here. Now let's also grab that warm dark color, sixth color in the second row. Now let's gently go over here, add a little bit of warmth. Then let's grab the lightest color, first color, and the second row for the highlights on this rock, the lighter parts like this area. those parts that get hit by the light. I think this looks good. So now we can move on to this rock. Again, we'll follow the same steps. So first tap that layer, then tap the plus. Then let's set this layer to clipping mask. Then for the brush, we will go back to the spires brush. And for the color, we will grab this one over here, second color and the third row. Let's just go over here. This is fine actually. Now let's lower the opacity to make it more subtle. So we'll tap the end. I'll set it to about 48%. Then pinch these layers together. Set it to alpha lock. I won't forget it this time. And then grab the jittery taper brush again. And then while we have this dark color, Let's separate these two rocks like this. Make this the shadow part. Actually, this entire rock is pretty much, well, what we're seeing is the shadow side. Give it a shadow here. So we're just Kind of like creating shadows in the shadow. Because of course we still need to shape this rock. Now let's grab an even darker color. This one, first color in the third row. For the darkest cracks. And then a 
lighter color this one over here fourth color in the third row now let's add a few of these lighter parts shaping that rock a bit Making some jagged lines. A little bit of light on this little rock. And of course, you can still shape this rock. You can still go to the eraser and erase parts if you like. If you want to get a more jagged look, if you want it to be less rounded, just go ahead and erase parts until you have something that looks a bit like this. And finally, let's work on this little island here. Let's just zoom in, let's go there. Let's go to layer seven here. Let's turn on alpha lock. And then for our color, we'll go and use this one, 10th color in the first row. We don't need a lot of texture here, but we can add a little bit with the spires brush, just a little dab like this, very subtle. Just a few tabs, then go to the jittery taper brush and add, well, actually, I think the fine liner brush would be better here. With a small fine liner brush, add a few little cracks, just a little bit of a suggestion that there's detail here. So just something like this. Then for some trees here, Let's make a new layer on top of this. Let's tap the plus. Then let's grab the jittery taper brush. And then for the color, we will grab this one again. Eight color in the third row. And let's just make two little trees. They're actually super big. If you compare them to the trees in the foreground, maybe these are more than two trees. Then let's grab a lighter color. Let's go for this one. That's the seventh color in the third row. Add some light on top. And then even lighter with this one. Tenth color in the third row. And for the tree trunks, we will go back to this layer, turn off alpha lock, then go back to the fine liner brush, and grab that dark color, that 10th color in the first row. And let's just add very simple trunks. Maybe a little branch or thing sticking out here. Just a little bit of extra interest. Then let's pinch these together so they are on one layer. And now let's go ahead and create the reflections for everything. Let's first make a reflection for our big island. Let's go to uh, this layer. And right now I'm thinking that to make the best reflection, it would be nice to have uh, this area and the rocks in front both on separate layers. So we need to have these trees on separate layers as well. Let's just do that. Let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, and then we will select the trees here at the bottom like this, close the selection, then swipe down with three fingers and then use cut and paste. And now when you go to the layer menu, you will see that these are on a separate layer right now. So we can move this bottom one and place it on top of our big rock and then pinch these together. And then do the same for these. Then we need to duplicate both of these layers. Let's start with this one, slide to the left, tap duplicate. And then for this one, slide to the left, tap duplicate. And then let's place this one underneath this one. And now let's start with this layer. Let's go to the move and transform to the little arrow and then use flip vertical. Let's zoom out a little bit. Then go to snapping and turn on magnetics and then move this one down. 
I do see we have those trees on this layer as well. That wasn't very smart, but I think we will be okay. Now let's set this to free form and squish this layer just a little bit like this. Now let's move on to the other layer, this one over here. Go to the Move and Transform tool, flip it vertical, move it downward, and then squish it a little bit like this. Maybe move it downward just a little bit. Now we do have a little issue with those tree trunks. But we can fix that. We can just go to this layer, then go, well, turn this one off for now, and go to the selection tool. Let's select these tree trunks like this. And then let's turn this one on again, then go to the move and transform tool, and it'll automatically select just those trees, and then we can move those down so everything is correct again. Then tap the arrow. And now we have a perfect reflection. Now let's pinch these layers together for the reflection. Now let's tap the layer and turn off alpha lock so we can blur this layer just a little bit. Let's go to the magic wand, then to Gaussian blur and slide to the right to let's say three or 4%. Then we'll go back to the layer, tap the N and lower the opacity a bit let's say maybe 75%. And then I want to make this reflection a little bit more bluish. To do that, we are going to turn on alpha lock again here, and then we'll go to the brushes and grab the color booster brush again, and we will set it to blue, just this ninth color in the first row. And now let's go over this layer with these rounded motions very gently and add a bluish touch to that reflection. I also want the reflection to be a bit more faded over here. A way to do that is by using a layer mask. We can tap this layer and add a mask. And then with black, we can grab black here by double tapping in a circle. And with a soft brush, you can go over that layer mask here at the bottom and make that fade a little bit. Perfect, now we just need to do this for the other rocks as well. Let's start with this one over here, let's slide to the left, tap duplicate, go to the bottom layer here, then to the move and transform tool, turn flip vertical, and then move this downward. And you can see that it doesn't quite align because of the shape. What you could do is use warp and then pull a little bit in the center to make it align just a little bit more, but don't be too obsessed about it. Something like this is really fine. Then go to the layer, turn off alpha lock. Now let's blur it a little bit by going to the magic wand and to Gaussian blur and slide to the right to around 3%. Then let's lower the opacity by tapping the N, setting it to 75%. And let's also make this a bit more bluish. So let's turn on alpha lock then grab the color booster brush again and then go over here give it a bit of a blue touch then for the next rock over here let's duplicate this layer slide to the left tap duplicate go to the bottom one then to the move and transform tool flip it vertical and set it to uniform move it downward well we are actually having an issue with that smaller one here so what we can do is go to the selection tool, S shape ribbon, select this one, then move it upward by going to the move and transform tool. We can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. Now I just want to manipulate this area. So let's go and select that. Close the selection, then go to the move and transform tool. And I think we can get away with this by using distort and just pushing, pulling this a little bit and perhaps using warp to align this reflection a bit. Something like this is fine. Then go to the layer, turn off alpha lock. Let's blur this layer a bit by going to the magic wand and to Gaussian blur 
and set this to, well, let's set this to 4% and then lower the opacity. Let's tap the N, slide to the left to 75%. And I kind of like the color here. We don't need to change that. Then let's go to this little island. Let's slide to the left, tap duplicate. Then we need to move this on top of the water actually, on top of this layer. Then let's set that to clipping mask. Then we can use the move and transform tool, flip it vertical, make sure to set it to uniform here, then move it down. Now you can see a little gap, so let's use warp and then push this up, push this up so it aligns. And then let's go to the magic wand, use Gaussian blur, slide to the right to 3%. And then let's lower the opacity. Let's tap the N and set it to 75%. Next, what I would like to do is move all of these reflections so they are together. Here we have a reflection. We can move that on top here. And this one, move it here. Then let's pinch these layers together. And now I actually want to darken a part of these reflections. Let's tap the plus for a new layer, then set this layer to clipping mask. Then let's tap this layer with all the reflections and tap select. So all of these reflections are selected and then go back to this layer. And I want to set this to multiply. We'll change the layer blending mode. So tap the N, scroll up to multiply, then grab a soft brush. Now let's keep it with this blue and now let's go over these top areas of the reflections, darkening that just a little bit over here as well and over here and a little bit over here. And then tap the S shape ribbon to turn off the selection. And here you can see the difference. It's just slightly darker. Now next we will add some highlights, some extra touches to the water. We'll do that on a new layer. So we'll tap the plus and I'd like to set this layer to screen. So we'll tap the N and scroll down to screen, which is great for highlights. We can add light touches, but you will still see different stuff that we have already painted. So you won't be covering everything. Now for the brush, I'd like to use the script brush. Remember we are in the recent brushes here at the top. The script brush is part of the illustration brushes, but this area shows all the brushes that we have recently used. Now for the color, let's grab this one fourth color in the first row. And first I'd like to make some horizontal lines and to make sure that we can only make horizontal lines, we can actually use drawing assist. We can go to the wrench, then to canvas, then turn on the drawing guide. Then tap edit drawing guide and turn assisted drawing on here. Then we can tap done and then we can turn the drawing guide off actually over here, but still our lines will only follow the grid and that's super handy. And what I'd like to do is make thin little lines. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Actually, let's go for 8%. Opacity is at a hundred. And let's make these horizontal lines also along these islands. And the harder you press, the thicker your line will become. So go along the island. Make a nice variation of lines. Also over here, little light edge. You can see how perfectly still this water is. It's a very calm, well, super calm sea. It adds to that peacefulness of this piece. So some shorter strokes. So 
some over here. So some can be short and some can be a bit longer. Just try to vary it a little bit. Some here in the distance. That's nice when some of them cover those reflections a bit. Next, I want to make some rounded like ripples. To do that, we need to turn off that drawing assist because we can't make rounded shapes when drawing assist is turned on. So let's go to the layer and you can see that it's assisted right now. We just need to tap the layer and turn off drawing assist. And then we can make some ripples around this rock, for instance. There's some rounded shapes. for some nice variation. Let's also do that over here, following the shape of this rock. So something like this. I feel it's a little bit too prominent right now, so let's lower the opacity. You can do that by tapping the S and sliding to the left. Let's go for something like, well, maybe 62%. Finally, the only thing that's left is adding some clouds to the scene. Let's do that on a layer on top of our sky layer. So let's tap the plus here. And then for our brush, we will grab the jittery taper brush again. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then for our color, let's grab this one over here. That's the seventh color in the first row. The opacity of the brush is at 100%. Let's set the size to 15%. And let's start making some clouds with these rounded shapes, rounded motions. Gently build up some cloud shapes. Start over here. And keep the bottom part a bit more flat and then the fluffy rounded parts at the top. And some little wispy parts. Over here as well, you can vary the thickness. The harder you press with this brush, the bigger the stroke will become. And on this side, another one. So I'm pressing harder right now for those bigger bumps. And then we can turn on alpha lock on this layer. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock. And I'll switch to a lighter color, this one, eight color in the first row. And then we'll add the lighter parts on this cloud. Just like with the rocks, we'll, we'll add the lighter parts on the left side. Keep the lighting consistent. And on this side as well. Make rounded motions. And then switch back to the previous color. You can do so by tapping and holding the circle here. And then make some rounded shapes like this. Over here as well. And now we are going to make a new layer on top. So we'll go to the layer menu, tap the plus, And then we are going to make another cloud. Let's start here with a small shape. And then we'll add a cloud here on top. Can't really see it, but we will be able to later on if we work with the lighter color. Some little dabs. Some little wispy clouds. Then let's switch to the lighter color. So tap and hold. And then let's go over here and make a distinguished new cloud so you don't really have to turn on alpha lock sometimes it's handy if you don't want to go over the edges but it's not necessary 
What you can also do is tap and hold the smudge tool to set the smudge tool to the jittery taper brush and then have the opacity set to 80%, size to about 25. And then you can go over here and smudge this out a little bit. Also with rounded motions. And then you can switch back to the brush, add some more detail. And now let's move on to this side. Start with some light fluffs here. And now let's switch back to that bluish color. So tap and hold. Make the big cloud shape. Some wispy parts here. Perhaps some over here, very thin. Then back to the white. So tap here, hold it to switch your color. Now let's also use the smudge tool again. Make rounded motions here. Get a bit of a blended area. And then back to the brush for some more crisp rounded shapes. Or switch to the blue by tapping and holding and getting some crisp rounded parts here. So this way you can easily build up simple clouds. Let's make another layer, tap the plus to make some more. Let's make a big one over here, covering that part of the other cloud. You can slowly layer these clouds on top of each other. So simple rounded motions. Then over here, another one. Let's make this go all the way down. Then back to the white, so tap and hold. Add white to this cloud on the left side. Or of course you can switch to the smudge tool. Again, make rounded motions. And back to the brush for the crisper edged parts. Then over here. A little bit over here, then back to the smudge tool. Smudge this out. Just make sure you create these rounded motions, these rounded shapes. Back to the brush, more distinguished shape here. Perhaps a little wispy one here. A little bit of the smudge tool to soften this. Back to the brush, some more of these wispy ones. And perhaps we can also add one over here, right behind our island. Maybe over here, some more white puffs. And combined with the blue. And then let's smudge it a little bit with the smudge tool. Now let's add one more layer of cloud. Let's tap the plus. Let's grab the brush. And then let's cover this lower area with a nice big cloud. Then let's grab the lighter color so you can tap and hold. And 
just go along the edges and some light puffs floating around. And you can grab the smudge tool to soften that area here. And then you can go back to the light color and add even more. And then back to the smudge tool to smudge that lower area. Finally, one more time go over here. Grab the smudge tool, soften it. And then we could go back to the blue color. Just add a few more of these wispy parts. Maybe some on top of other areas. So you can really nicely layer all of these clouds on top of each other. Let's also grab the white again for some wispy clouds on top here. Maybe add some white here. So you can see that with some relatively easy steps, you can create stunning looking clouds. You should be really proud of yourself because you made it to the end of the tutorial. I hope you had fun and that you have learned a bunch of new techniques. Don't forget to share your work and maybe you would like to turn this into a streak and follow this tutorial next. I would like to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time for the next tutorial.